What's happening, everybody? I'm Wesley, your host here on the Blockchain Revolution, where you subscribe to stay up to date and informed on everything happening in the great and wondrous world of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. Could blockchain technology break the banks in 2020? Could this finally be the year? The central banks have been in control of the financial institution, real estate, and insurance companies for far too long, in my opinion. Could it be that blockchain technology is finally beginning to break that down? Now that Bitcoin has allowed people to quite literally be their own banks, let's jump on the internet and take a look at what's happened in the first quarter alone in 2020. From Forbes magazine, JP Morgan, the largest bank in the United States, Bitcoin's biggest enemy, suddenly appears to be going all in on cryptocurrency. JP Morgan has signed Coinbase and Gemini, two of the largest exchanges for cryptocurrency and is already processing transactions at this time. The cryptocurrency and Bitcoin community has complained for years that banks including JP Morgan have denied them services and blocked accounts that dealt with crypto businesses. Meanwhile, it has emerged Jamie Dimon has been hosting secret meetings with Coinbase Chief Executive Brian Armstrong since 2018. What people say and what they do often don't correlate very well, but this is what it is here in 2020. JP Morgan is rolling out the first U.S. bank-backed cryptocurrency to transform payments. The lender moves more than $6 trillion around the world every day for corporations in the massive wholesale payments business and trials set to start in a few months. A tiny fraction of that will... JP Morgan is preparing for a future in which parts of the essential underplanning of the global capitalism from cross-border payments to corporate debt issuance moves to the blockchain. Bitcoin's market structure more resilient than currencies, equities, treasuries, and gold, says JP Morgan. Strategists have reportedly found Bitcoin's market structure to be more resilient than those of currencies, equities, treasuries, and gold. In a new report on the Bitcoin stress test, JP Morgan wrote that cryptocurrencies have longevity as an asset class. On Bloomberg, in March, Bitcoin, like many other areas of the market, underwent a stretch of severe disruption as world economies started to shut down investors fled riskier assets due to the coronavirus outbreak, but Bitcoin emerged relatively unscathed. Cryptocurrency takes its first stress test. Cryptocurrencies largely survived the madness of March, suggests longevity as an asset class, wrote strategist by the bank, J.P. Morgan. President Trump has ramped up calls for negative interest rates. And you might say, well, who in their right mind would want to pay negative interest rates? That means the customers that store their money in the bank are charged a certain percent of maybe small percent of interest, but either way you're paying for someone else to be in control of your money. And it, to me, it just doesn't seem logical, but if the United States was to implement some sort of negative interest rate, it would not be the first one. Japan, Sweden, Europe, Denmark, and Switzerland all currently have negative interest rates, which means all of those customers for those central banks are paying a small percent annually to have the bank control their funds. And what happens when you want to pull it all out? They won't even give it to you sometimes, yeah? It's a, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's, it seems to be coming to an end, and I think blockchain is definitely going to serve a great role in that. German stock exchange will list Bitcoin ETP. Investment firm ETC Group plans to list a Bitcoin ETP on Germany's extra-digital stock exchange in late June. BTCE tracks the price of Bitcoin and is physically backed by the cryptocurrency. The Bitcoin will be held in cold storage by digital asset custodian Bitco. ETC Group CEO Bradley Duke says the crypto sector has been held back by concerns about complexity, accessibility, and governments. With BTCE, we are transporting Bitcoin into the fold of mainstream regulated financial markets. Investors get the benefit of trading and owning Bitcoin through a regulated security while having the optionality of redeeming Bitcoin if they choose. In short, in Germany, if and when the mainstream financial institutions begin to fail, the people can simply move their funds or their assets over into Bitcoin seamlessly on the same stock exchange. I mean, 
Seems like somebody's getting ready for something to happen. Just saying. Turkish real estate firm Antalya Homes announced that its customers can now pay for properties listed on its platform with Bitcoin, the highest valued real estate sale ever made while using Bitcoin as a payment in Turkey was done on Antalya Homes not too long ago. Nexus Mutual, an alternative insurance provider for a variety of Ethereum-based DeFi protocols, has seen its risk pool doubled over the past 90 days. Nexus can barely keep up with the demand for smart contract cover in the exploding decentralized finance arena. Nexus Mutual CEO and founder Hugh Karp says, we are in this position where there are lots of people who want heaps of cover, but we don't quite have enough assets to cover everything we would like to right now. So it's a good problem to have, and we're working on it. The way Nexus works is members of the mutual join by purchasing NXM tokens that allow them to participate in the decentralized autonomous organization. All decisions are voted on by members who are incentivized to pay genuine claims. Insurance companies starting on the blockchain. Blockchain solutions launch in pharma, energy, and food industries. According to the reports, the Chinese branch of one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world recently announced that it will work with VeChain to develop a blockchain-based solution for tracking the supply chain of clinical drugs. The solution will reportedly record batch numbers related to specific drugs on a permissioned blockchain. A recent article in Harvard Business Review noted how blockchain may help companies achieve compliance with provisions in the U.S. Drug Supply Chain Security Act and the EU's Falsified Medicines Directive that address the combating of counterfeiting and tampering in the pharmaceutical supply chain. In food supply chain development, the Chinese subsidiary of a major U.S. grocery and retail company recently announced that it will partner with VeChain to implement a blockchain system for tracing food products. The Chinese office for a big four accounting and consulting firm will reportedly assist in the project. Also in China, the province of Yunnan has reportedly launched a blockchain solution for tracing tea products. Russia proposes a law that criminalizes buying or using Bitcoin. The draft bills were lodged with Russia's Ministry of Economic Development plans to completely stop digital assets from being used as a means of payment by citizens or corporations. Why in the world would Russia want to ban Bitcoin? Well, let's take a look at the value of the ruble. Oh, oh, in the past five years. Oh, it's not, it's really not looking good. So that tells me that Russia is scared of their currency falling and their citizens jumping and running to anything else as soon as possible, which just happens to be Bitcoin at this time to be the best option. And I think they're afraid. I think Russia is kind of scared of Bitcoin and they see the value of their currency. They look over here, they see the value of Bitcoin is steadily increasing after that major drop we've already recovered. And they, I don't think they're prepared to lose control over their citizens, to be completely honest with you. India moves a step closer to banning private cryptocurrencies once again for the second time. They banned it, re-allowed it, central banks are pissed again, so they want to ban it again. I wonder, I wonder what's going on over there. At the same time as Russia and India attempting to ban cryptocurrency, two of the largest economies in the world, China and the United States, are pushing to stay ahead of it by creating their own digital cryptocurrency. China aims to launch the world's first official digital currency. Dozens of central banks have started looking at whether to issue digital currencies, but only a few have run trials and none has gone as far as China which appears set to become the first country to put a central bank digital currency into limited use. China's four largest commercial banks began internal testing this month. What kind of testing might they be doing? Well, McDonald's is reportedly a part of China's digital currency trial. McDonald's is among a handful of companies taking part in a new pilot program for China's upcoming digital yuan, according to state-backed media. As the world's second largest economy pushes forward with its plans for an electronic currency. This isn't this isn't, you know, some kind of pipe dream. This is what's going on right now in the first quarter of 2020. After Congress debuts digital dollar amid COVID-19, new think tanks broaden vision of US money. So what is the United States doing? Well, 
They hired the CEO of Coinbase to be in control of the Treasury. From Cointelegraph, Coinbase's chief legal officer resigns to oversee U.S. national banking system. Brian Brooks, Coinbase. Brian Brooks, Coinbase's chief legal officer, will resign from the company to join the office of the Comptroller of the Currency, an independent banking regulator operating under under the U.S. Department of the Treasury. According to the official announcement. Brooks has been designated as first deputy comptroller, the agency's second highest position. So, essentially, the United States government has just hired one of the CEOs of Coinbase, one of the largest exchanges for cryptocurrency, to be in charge of the United States Treasury, which controls the United States dollar. I mean, if it's, I just, I just don't see how it could be a whole lot more clear than that as far as how far this blockchain development's going right now. Along with all the protests going on in America, it's not the only place. Lebanese currency collapse. Failed policies led to an economic meltdown. Lebanon is facing an unprecedented economic crisis and the local currency has already lost about 60% of its value. It lost 50% overnight. The central bank's policies have come under fire while citizens are protesting how the government handles the economic meltdown which led to the people's living situation deteriorating. Protests erupted in Lebanon on Friday over the government's handling of the unprecedented economic crisis that has tanked the local Lebanese currency, devastated people's savings, and sent prices and inflation skyrocketing. What do the people in Lebanon do? Banks set on fire in Lebanon. And that's one way to do it. It's me, I'm just going to buy Bitcoin. Uh, but I mean, to each their own. Hey, everyone has the right to live their own life. I'm not here. I'm not here to try and control anyone. I'm just here to try and let you know there's a better option. In essence, all the things that the banks have controlled for, I'd say 50, 60, 70, 100 years maybe, is now all slowly, within the first quarter of 2020, being put on the blockchain. The technology that Bitcoin has created. Is Bitcoin breaking the banks? It definitely looks that way. For fun, let's go ahead and check out the market. Let's see. Bitcoin at $9,438. Ethereum, $231. XRP, 19 cents. Bitcoin Cash, two, everything seems to be pretty copacetic. It's definitely come back after this dip we've seen in the past couple days. It took a pretty decent 5% hit, but in the world of cryptocurrency, that's not really anything. I mean, I was definitely not losing any sleep over 5% loss. Especially when you had 50, 75% gains in the past three months. It's, uh, it's not really nothing to talk about. Let's see where Bitcoin is legal. Look at that. Look at, look, look where, this is where all the bright green places, all the dark green places are where you can legally spend Bitcoin as a currency right now in the world. Uh, that's more than most currencies combined, to be honest with you. There's no exchange needed. You can just spend your Bitcoin. They accept it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Dow Jones. Uh, and for the past five years, it looks like it took a huge drop in March, just like everything else, but it's come back about 50%. And Bitcoin in the past five years <clears throat> also took a huge dip in March and has come back 100%. So with a little bit of research and speculation combined, I would definitely say that the banks are about to go out of business if you like the video, smash that button. If you want to leave a comment, you know where the box is. And until we meet again, stay up. Peace.